Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. I just want to go and get one thing from my office. Yep. 30 seconds away. 33 seconds. Hello. Here we are. It's working so far. Uh, Jim, Car future huh? Jim Carroll here and uh, drummer Tom Morley. Uh, and uh, we're calling this little show um, A Futurist and a Drummer Run Into a Robot. And, and what are we doing, Tom? We're going to talk about artificial intelligence. Um, maybe we should give a little bit of a, a backstory here first. Um, I thought I'd have a chat GBT, which is that, uh, you know, a uh, um, uh, thing that writes text, predictive text, they call it, the artificial intelligence system, which is all the rage, write an introduction for us. Um, but it's down right now, and that's sort of the status of what's going on with AI. But uh, what are we doing here? You and I have chatted about this. You you describe what, where you think we're going with this uh, crazy little show. And what I want to do, we could talk all day, so I'm going to put uh, 30 minutes on this just so we have a timer, uh, so we're respectful of time and keep ourselves focused. Well, I think um, if... If you look back at what H.G. Wells said, that we were going to be freed from drudgery by technology um, in a way that's come about and in a way it's just heaped more work on people. The um, My particular angle is the democratization of creativity. And that is the question, whether it's just made it available to everybody so it's useless or whether... Um, it's a great thing that now we can all make pictures fast. We can all write books fast. Yeah, and and I mean, there's a billion questions around AI. Let's let's give a little bit of context as to who you are, who I am, uh, and mm -hmm. how we met, and why um, uh, we've arrived at this uh, very different place at, at the same time. Uh, tell me about this video. Give me a little bit of your background. Um, tell your story uh, for folks who uh, don't know um, how you've ended up in this particular aspect of uh, the AI space. Well, the interesting thing is, I, I was at art school, and um, but the, the, the art schools are places for artists to gather creative people. So, for instance, people like Roxy Music met at art school, and then they formed a band. 
I met up with a guy called Green Gartside and Neil Jinks. We formed a band called Scritty Politty. Um, this footage is footage from the Notting Hill Carnival, where I was recording my own record after I left Scritty. And uh, you can see I'm a real poser. <laughs> yeah, so you, I mean, you were a drummer with a with an '80s <laughs> rock band, an '80s uh, <laughs> band, and uh, that's right. You know, here, here you are today. And a little bit of background about me. Um, you know, I wrote uh, 34 books about the internet in the 1990s. I found myself on the news media all the time. Uh, I was out there describing uh, what this thing called the internet meant to the world. Uh, and everybody was trying to discover what's happening, what's going on, what does it mean, where is it going to take us to. Uh, so I was doing crazy things like this where I was going on shows like this is a clip from 1994 um, where I'm describing there's this thing called the net coming along and it's going to going to change the world. Here we find ourselves today. Uh, and maybe a little bit of context on how we met. You've been on the speaking circuit for quite some time. I've been out there for quite some time. We met through someone who, who works in the industry. Um, yeah. And we had the chance to meet in London, England uh, just a few months ago. Tell me tell me about this machine before we talk about your corporate speaking career. What's what's this? What happened here? Uh, yeah. And what, what went on in the early days of uh, AI, artificial intelligence? That machine's called the CR78 drum machine. And um, we... We're recording uh, with kits, you know, kit like this in the back. And we said, let's try it. Let's try a drum machine. Um, so I was the only one who could program it. So I was, I stayed in business for a little while. It's, it looks like a piece of laboratory equipment, doesn't it? I love that. So everyone else is scared of it, but I learned how to program. So, um, but really they made those machines simpler and simpler. So anybody could program them. And then I was out of business. So because, for all this, all this talk that artificial intelligence technology is going to put people out of business, I, I mean, it happened to you. You're a drummer in a, in a rock band, drum machines. Come well, on, and it did, put, it, it did put me out of business, but, it, but technology will always put people with digital skills out of business. It's, it's what it does. You know, that, that's how the industrial revolution started. You needed 200 people to plow a farm. Now you need four people in a tractor. That's going to happen. Anything mechanical. Um, so, but the thing is, it didn't change my heart. You know, I wanted to change the world by reconnecting people to their own creativity. So I, I went out and I bought 200 African drums and started going around conferences, getting people to uh, build teams. You, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're slick, man. <laughs> here it is here. We've got all the gear happening here. You have a lot of virtual stuff during COVID and we haven't used it. Yeah. Yet, but but what yeah. we've got happening here is this is a video where you've gone into a corporate group and a team building exercise and you've got 200 drums and, uh, yeah. you know, rather than people talking about how they can be a great team, you get them up and jumping around the room and dancing and doing remarkable things. Uh, yeah, yeah. I put, uh, this whole uh, team building process. Yeah. So I put the theory into practice. So so consequently, it, the, the fact that drum machines took over, took over in the music business, there was all these other jobs that... Uh, are available and that's the thing you just got to stick with your values if your values are connecting people to you know to make better decisions in the world you'll find any way to do it you know if if ai completely nicks everything i'll go and be a chef and i'll get people around the dinner table you know and i'll facilitate the chat i don't mind what i do so we're gonna we're gonna talk and we're gonna look at some of the some of the AI stuff that you've been doing, um, some of the material yeah. that you've been generating. But just just to give a little bit more context, this is how we met. So you're out there doing your thing. I'm out there walking onto great big stages in Las Vegas, yeah. talking about the future and talking about trends and creativity and, and innovation. And through uh, somebody in the industry, we've had a chance to meet. We we spent a lot of time uh, talking with with each other through our virtual studios through COVID. And I yeah. think we sort of discovered this opportunity um, of bringing our creativity together uh, into this new world. And here's the type of crazy thing that caught my attention <laughs> when AI exploded on the scene. All of a sudden, uh, people were doing um, images with uh, Mad Max and Teletubbies that were completely yeah. generated by technology, that were completely generated by systems known as stable diffusion uh, and... Um, other similar technologies and you know all of a sudden we're in a, in a crazy world and this this has been going on for what um four months five months when did when did you first get into uh 
I, f I first got into uh, Mid Journey, uh, one of those stable diffusion packages, in September. So it feels like it could have been years ago, but uh, yeah, it was only September. And I've watched it go from version three to version four. Now, the, the picture you just showed was in version four. You could never have done that in version three. But um, so I've seen it turn from this rather scratchy, oh, there might be something here if we keep working it, keep working it, to a system where you just put in, as you do there, uh, Mad Max played by the Teletubbies. And bang, it's there. It's there in seconds. You know. So so when did you start? Like when was that happening for you? Last August, yeah, last September? Se September 2022, yeah. Okay, so let's, let's, let's pull up some of your early yeah. images and i mean yeah. you've 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 got a you've got a billion of these i mean i've been following you on Facebook yeah i have you're posting <laughs> on uh, linkedin um i mean i'm watching an artist um you know explode into creativity but this is yeah. this is one of your early ones so this is something yeah from last september that, how, uh, explain to folks how you created this what process well i deliberately wanted to get away everyone said uh oh, ai it's all um just everything looks the same it looks like 1970s progressive rock album covers. That's that is that was its default at the beginning. Now these, I deliberately thought, all right, I'll do something that isn't like that. I'll just say uh, 1960s screen print or 1950s jazz club print of uh, a man and a woman playing drums. Now that image that took me about two hours of re-rolling 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 it's what it's what you what they call it you just keep saying give me another one give me another one give me another one um so the those of us who were involved at the beginning uh, there was a kind of camaraderie because it was almost like um you know uh, a road trip we were going on with all sorts of trouble and uh, often driving all night People, it, it's totally addictive. It's not so addictive now because it delivers really quickly. But in those days, yeah, exactly. You go. Here's, here's like what's that. interesting. You're you're already saying in those days, and this is like yeah. last last September, last October. You're already <laughs> well, referring yeah. that as, as to yeah. something like being a long time ago, and I think that's yeah. indicative of how quickly this technology it's, has gone along. It, it's exponential and and what is so lovely about that is that it was like being in on the on the beginning of a gold rush we were talking about it in that in that way oh my god have you seen this if you and we'd we'd share this stuff online if you put in uh show me this picture through this kind of camera with this depth of field and this aspect ratio and then we'd be sharing this stuff oh yeah yeah now the eyes are better now da, da, da. so we it was like we were discovering something it's like we we're in aladdin's cave going wow look have you seen this have you seen this have you seen this it was an amazing yeah, and time so you're sort of in this 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 new world of creativity and artistic expression and discovering new forms of art at the same time i'm out there i was over in switzerland uh, when this exploded on the scene. And I was speaking to a whole bunch of corporate risk managers for a great big global insurance companies. And I was talking about the future of risk. And I was trying to get across them, look, we're in this world in which new risks, new problems, new challenges are coming at us with staggering speed. And we might get hit by something, uh, you know, in a matter of months that we're not even thinking about now. And I think it was like a, a week later that we started to see the explosion of these images coming along. Mm. Uh, and I remember predicting years ago that, you know, we're going to be in this world of, you know, we've talked about deep fakes. We're going to be in this world of absolutely challenging deep fake images that will yeah. blur the distinction between reality and what's fake and society won't know how to be able to deal with it. So that's where we were in September, October. Fast forward a few months. Here we are. This is the one you put out last week. What's what's going on with uh, these images? What's what's happening? Here? These um, these are actually um, these are quite late images. But if there, there's one, there may you may have one there that I send you, which is an early one. So the early one, the resolution's no good. All all the drums are misshapen. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah. Where am I? Where well, am I, 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 I getting to? Am I getting to uh, this one here? Uh, yeah, those sorts of things. You know, you, you look. That are they symbols or are they, uh, uh, you know, umbrellas? We don't know. 
But later on, if you just go umbrella uh, or symbol, then you can get something absolutely beautiful. You know, looks looks metallic. So look, you see the drum in the foreground there. You could go and play it, and you know that room is full of people. It's not just a mush. In the old in the olden days, it would just be a mush that gave gave an impression of people, um, but. There weren't any people really when you look closer. So you look at those. So you were generating see. these images around what time frame? December, January, um, November? Uh, these, um, these which are a bit like the prog rock covers. Um, but I thought I'd just try some out, you know, this sort of grandiose uh, kind of film set just because it was possible. Uh, yeah, so these, these would have been December by then. The, these I generated probably a month ago, and this was so what like, we're witnessing uh, here is is just an increasing sophistication of yeah the image that can be created through these artificial intelligence generative technologies whatever whatever we're calling them are, yeah are, are are you what's 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 your mindset on this I mean do you know how quickly this is evolving do you know um, oh, man it, it it'll go. This year, we won't just be uh, generating still images, or we could, you know, we'll be, we'll be able to say, go from that image to that image and make me a movie in between. You know, let, let's take these drummers and put them on that stage, and I want to see them pick their drums up and go. I mean, okay. <laughs> this. And then, <laughs> and then most recently, last week, here we are with what you're doing last week yeah. with this fascinating series of images where and I'll, I'll bring these up in a in a better resolution uh yeah. later on but where you're you're create here's here's a better uh, view of it you're creating this sort of portal to the outside world um in yeah. this architecturally designed room with this beautiful comfortable couch space this was last week so if we compare where you were last october yeah well that, you if you today yeah, the whole deep fake thing and, and those film sets and those drummers and the huge cathedrals and these people go, oh, yeah, that it reminded me of when I was growing up, when I was about seven and, you know, we'd see some TV, black and white TV show of a, a spaceship flying, you know, wobbling across the screen. And my brothers, elder brothers would say to me, oh, yeah, but that's just trick photography. So they'd dismiss it like that. So I thought, well, why don't I make something that people don't want to dismiss, like a beautiful window seat surrounded by books, sun streaming in. And in my prompt, I generally say golden, late afternoon, golden sun streaming through the window and uh, just making everything look glorious. And sometimes in the prompt like that, I'll say love is saving the world. Now, if I put, a, if I put, I don't say make the, cushions orange i say love is saving the world and then somehow the computer goes oh i see we've just got to really set a glow around these pictures so it's it's what is called promptology so you learn uh these kind of weird commands you can't just prompt, prompt, promptology there's actually a phrase yeah, yeah promptology is gonna i mean we we will be promptologists so as you would go to a design company or a, you know branding company and say give me your best designers uh we have this concept we're, we're just going to talk and then and then you put it into pictures for us that's what uh prompters so, so, will do I, I i'm not doing this for a living i'm doing it for entertainment but there will be people who do that they'll set themselves up i can prompt you a picture in half an hour you know so, so did you have, I mean, a, a whole bunch of questions. Did you have any idea six months ago that you would, you know, be spending, uh, you know, a, a amount of time in your life creating no. artificial no. art? No, well, well, do, do you know what? Because I, I, because I went to art school, like I say, um, because I decided to change to make music, I, I thought it would change the world better in a more kind of sustainable way through music. I didn't really want to give up art. So what it's done, it's allowed me to go back and do all the things that I would have done after art school, years, 40 years. I'm just catching up on that 40 years. But it, 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 it's, it's fair to say that what you have seen in the last 
six months, like anybody, any of us, or uh, what is it? It's not even six months. It's like five months, four months. What any of us have seen in the last several months with the explosion and the massive acceleration of this technology, I mean, it's, it's kind of staggering. When we look at your early images to what you're creating now, I mean, it's just, it's just light world difference. And, you know, we're, we're, we're talking in terms of where this is going to take us and what it's going to mean. So let me, let me bring this page up uh, <laughs> and put this into perspective. So this is yeah. something uh, I discovered um, just a few days ago. This is, a, this is a website called This Model Does Not Exist. Uh, and this is another individual like you who's out exploring what this means and where this is taking us. And, and what he's doing is uh, this is this is an artificially intelligence generated image of this model. And what, what he's doing is he's putting up several of these um, every single day and he's having people vote on which ones should be posted to Instagram and I, yeah. I go through these images and, and I'm just kind of, my gosh, these are generated by a computer. Yeah. And, you know, and, is, and, and the thing is, is what, what, <laughs> you see what he's doing. I think what he's doing there is quite simple because once you've got the face, right? You say, you can say, all right, keep the face, just put her in a field, keep the face, just put her on the beach, keep the face. So, so it's not like you're starting from scratch all the time. That is why I think we'll be able to make movies because you can just say, keep the face, but make her walk, you know, or make her stand up on the board or something. It would, I mean, I'm saying this, I don't know the technology in the background, but because I've seen the exponential right. curve and I've read a few things, it says, yeah, yeah, movies are coming. So then we're really in trouble because, you know, people will be falling in love with it. You know, the people in Dubai will be offering to fly her over and uh, marry her and she she doesn't yeah, exist I, well, I, I actually, that, I, I it might be an imaginary post. but it might be a robot in dubai actually yeah i i had a post uh, years ago i wrote 25 trends for 2025 yeah uh, and i suggested that you know one time in the future by 2025 we might be in a world in which you know the first fully full feature artificial intelligence generated movie uh would come to existence i might actually be right in that given the speed with which this yeah uh, is coming about what what about this so i you know i think what we want to try and do is if we can get a little show going here weekly yeah um things we've seen things you've seen things i've seen so this is something i saw uh that happened last week we filed a lawsuit challenging stable diffusion that's one of these uh engines that is used to generate this art um a 21st century clash to all the violates the rights of artists because AI needs to be fair and ethical for everyone. I mean, you and I have chatted about this. What What are your thoughts on what this does to the future well, careers? Uh, people are going to lose their jobs. Is it stealing art from artists? Are there real issues here? How does society deal with this stuff? It's, it's really, it's layered, isn't it? It's really complex because um, the guy who's, uh, who's designed the model there, that she isn't anyone so he's not stealing her identity nor is he stealing a photographer's work you know she's she's a composite because if you put in a beautiful girl 25 years old looks a bit like a model uh, the 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 program will look bang 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 all around the internet 25 year old girls look like a model da, 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 da. And then if you say put her in a spacesuit, it'll go, what's a spacesuit look like? And then it'll build one around it. So so there's no, I don't think there's anything ethically wrong with that. If if you put in, um, I want a uh, a picture of a cat on the chair in the style of such and such an artist. And that artist or illustrator is still alive and pitching for work. And you can do it exactly in their style, which it will be able to do, because if their work's online, it will just go and study all of their pictures and go, oh, I see what you want. And then if, if it isn't quite right, you just say, uh, give me another four. It's like being at Vegas, pulling the slot machine. And then you go, that's the one. The client will like that. So um, that is an ethical issue because you are directly sort of copying their style as uh, however um how they you know who are these people i don't know about this article you see who are they suing um who would you they're, know they're suing stable diffusion they're they're suing are they suing 
well, that's mad. You know, you, you can, I think you can only do it on a case by case issue. I don't see how. how and how, isn't this isn't yeah. this a little bit like mixtapes or the the music that's created with a you know the whole sampling thing that ha happened with 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 music and yeah, I mean we're going back you know years where they sampled you know Aerosmith's song into a uh, into a rap song that became a massive huge hit. I mean, isn't this sort of the the, the same type of thing um, going on yeah. here, or are there yeah, no, no. unfolding? It's exactly it's exactly that, and de depending on the band who you've sampled, they will either go after you and shut it down, or they'll go after you and say you owe us some money, or they'll go after you and say great, you know, good luck to you. So it's up to them. I don't think there's any particular one law, but uh, it just depends what lawyers they get onto it. Uh, or they're, they're, actually, I say that there was there was a, there was a time when the length of a sample. Um, determined whether you then had to start paying the original artist. But, of course, you could always just decrease that length by, you know, thousandths of a second, and then you're within the law. But as with anyone, well, you explore this and I explore this in terms of what it means. The people who are really going to make money off it are going to be the, uh, are going to be the lawyers <laughs> because there's going to be a yeah. lot of fascinating <laughs> stuff unfolding here. And it sort of goes well, to what I always emphasize on stage. Some people see the future and see a threat innovators see the same future and be an op see an opportunity and that's you i mean you're in the latter case yeah 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 well, this, it, just like you looked it, at a drum machine i mean okay it's going to change my world and um i better figure out you know how to use this technology and what it means rather than throwing yeah it and, that, hands and saying that's the end of my future exactly and then at a certain point you just have to walk away you go oh i see it's they've just made it easy for everybody because when i first used to walk in the studio with a drum machine the engineers would go, oh, no, crikey. And then I'd turn it on. i go, duh, 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 and they go, he knows how to use it. You know, and then two years later, I'd go back in. they go, oh, hi, Tom. Yeah, we got the new drum machine. Look, have a listen. And they'd just, they'd know how to use it because they'll always make the technology. And this is what's happening to stable diffusion. That's why I talk about the, the, the glory days of version three of Mid Journey when we were like, kind of investigators when it got to version four um we just said oh well okay the game's that you know the fun part of the game is over it's just easy anybody can do it so so so, so, have you, so, have so you, you have to actually keep this walking makes me wonder, have, have, have you seen any sort of ai music generation systems out there do you think that's imminent i mean are we just you know months away from having a website where we can go in and say you know create me a, a 19 late 1970s punk band yeah, uh, you know, well, there, the... there, there, there's a big story out now. Nick Cave, um, Chat GPT wrote a song in his style, um, and he's written this. Ex, I don't, what's the word? Excoriating kind of critique of it, um, and he's talking all about his soul. You know, it, I personally, I think he goes a bit over the top, talking about the torment in his soul, and you know what it takes to to make a song it, i mean he's right but um but but that isn't really what i don't think that's the that that's just a kind of personal taste thing what because if you write a song or you make a piece of art or something, what you're interested in is the outcome does that make the viewer look different does it make the person who's listening dance or cry or something so what you know what's going on in his soul it's fair enough you know go ahead but but if ai can generate products be it music art whatever that affects people so it changes their neuroscience you know it gives them hope it gives, you know whatever then then i think it's a different issue isn't it it's not we're not stealing anything we're adding something so world. when you're going out and doing your corporate work and you're, you're leading these uh, corporate groups in these, uh, these team exercises and, you know, accelerating the enthusiasm and, you know, excitement of a group as they're dealing with these, you know, long two, mm. three day corporate events. Um, mm. Do you see, do you see any sort of role where you can start dragging in some of the stuff you're doing with AI into this, or is it uh, a little bit too far away uh, for that? I think well because I'm starting to do more speaking. Um, certainly, I, I I've been using AI to do these sort of glorious backgrounds, which I think you, do. Do you have the ones of the 
uh, oh, you, I think you may have shown the windows. Yeah, now these, you know, as far as being useful to me, I can say to a group, okay, so look at those four windows. If you were to be making a to-do list in those four places, would it be exactly the same list? Because what needs to be on our to-do list? It needs to be maintenance. It needs to be sort of personal development. And it needs to be some sort of grandiose project just to keep us going. So if you look at those four, where are you going to do the maintenance list? I would say, for me, it's bottom left. So I can imagine myself there going, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got it. Yeah, I left that letter. I must open it and send it to my bookkeeper. Da, da, da. If I'm in the bottom right, I'm not going to be thinking about my accountant. I'm going to be thinking about a show on Broadway. You know? If I'm in the top left, I'm probably just relaxing. If I'm, the t if I'm in the top right, I might be writing the, you know, finally finishing the intro to my book. You know, because so, so I think I think that I, I think they're facilitators. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so but I mean, everything I'm hearing here from you um, is this stuff is coming out as really fast. I'm I'm working with it. I'm playing with it. I'm spending an incredible amount of time. Uh, exploring it, and I, somehow I'm going to view this as an opportunity. Um, I don't know what the yeah. heck it means, um, but yeah, I mean that. Uh, I think that that's a great position. I don't know what the heck it means, but I'm going to put some time into it. And, uh, and, and that goes exactly what what I say on stage to my core groups is, you know, look, when it comes to the future, we don't know exactly where we're going, but we're making great time. And it, uh, this whole AI thing. I think more than anything uh, defines that because I mean, this is going to change law. It's going to change industries. It's going to lead to all kinds of new artistic exposure. Yeah. It's going to lead to all kinds of new artists. It's going to lead to all kinds of tremendous societal challenges. Yeah. And the whole I, I'm buzz in the news is this though. Tell me, tell me about this. You sent me this uh, just a few minutes. I, I just saw that just before we came online. AI will not, uh, not replace you. A person who's using AI will replace you. Now, this is why um i'm interested i mean i'm interested anyway because i'm an artist but i'm interested to be on that journey with those people in the original gold rush in version three because we what we're doing we're building a kind of stamina and we're building a um oh it's like the hero's journey that you know you you gather allies when you cross the threshold you gather allies. You say, we don't really know what this quest is going to be about. But man, I'm really glad you're here. And I'm really glad you're here. And I'm glad you're here. I, I want to be one of those people okay. on that journey. And I, I know you're going to be there. So at least there's two of us. <laughs> okay, so, so, and, and here's the backstory to close out with 38 seconds to go. I actually came to you and said, hey, we should write a book about this. And we spoke about it. And then we realized by the time we put a book together, it's going to be gloriously out of date. Yeah, that's uh, true. This stuff is moving so fast. We said maybe we'll do a show around it. So, um, what do, what do you say we uh, maybe try and get together for a half hour a week? You bring in stuff that you've seen and you've been working on. I'll bring in stuff that I've seen and I've been yeah. working on. It'll be a futurist and a drummer walking into a robot uh, and what we're discovering along the way. What do you think? We'll uh, try and yeah, do I think it's, I think it's a great idea, and uh, I think um, we'll gather some allies on the way. You know. Who knows? Okay, yep. Maybe we'll bring in some guests and, uh, you know, other folks and we'll explore this world. So, uh, look, uh, we totally made this up. This uh, sort of came together uh, yesterday in the last two hours. And uh, here we are. And I put my 30 minute clock on and uh, we're out of time. So uh, let's try and do this next week. Uh, we're going to figure out how to schedule it out to my Facebook, my LinkedIn, your Facebook, your LinkedIn uh, and other places. And uh, let's just run with it and see where it goes. So from uh, outside Toronto, Canada and uh uh, London, England. Tom, good to see so, you. And uh, yeah. like I said, the smartest corporate group in the world would be the CEO who books the two of us to come in together and do a corporate gig together. I'll talk about the future. You'll get people fired up for uh, team building opportunities. Yeah. Uh, and we'll give them the greatest event on the planet. Yeah, we will be the future. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, good Great. We will, uh, we will see Take you next time. Take care, my friend. See okay, bye-bye.